my clock says it's eight o'clock. Do we have? I see Councillor Samson, Councillor Moyes, Councillor Smith with us. Not yet. Hilarious. Yes. Present. Okay, doc. So it's uh, well, it's eight o'clock according to me. Okay, so this is the I'm opening the meeting of and for Paris Council. This is the full council meeting. Agenda uh, 21 stroke 11. And item one is uh, any apologies? Ashley? Uh, none received. Okay, none by me. Item two, declarations of interest. Any councillors got any interest to declare? None, Chair. None, Chair. No. Okay, thank you. Uh, item three is the open forum. Any members of the public wishing to comment on anything that's on the agenda or to raise any questions about them? Uh, Alan Murdoch. Chair? Uh, just th first one about apologies for absence again, just to query whether any whether anything has been heard of either Councillor Burton or Councillor Burkehill for let's say the foreseeable um, the recent past, uh, the last past. three months, the last three months, say for the sake of argument. Um, Chair, has there been any indication of their intentions? They haven't done anything for three months. Does that require an explanation? No. Nope. That's acceptable, is it? It's what it is. Okay, so we're not doing anything about that. We're just going to let that continue to stand. And What, a, what have you got in mind? That you as chair should take some responsibility to um, restore the complement of the council by encouraging those people to do what they said they would do when they stood for election or to resign and let other people do it. Well, as I wrote to you some weeks ago, I have absolutely no power over other councillors. Other you, ha you have power of persuasion. During the course of a meeting. Okay, uh, we'll leave that one then. And could I move on to the uh, the question of the governance review? And could I suggest that until we actually see the governance document uh, or the consultation document, it's a little bit premature for us to be making any representations or decisions about what should be done. Um, because anything that we do or say at the moment could be construed as being premature in the absence of having all the information and the next meeting would be a very good time to decide how to go about um, either opposing in the case of most of us or um, approving in your case uh, the proposal. Sorry you don't know what my opinion is about it yet. I know what you said last time and what you said in the press. But the, the point the point is, I think I think it'd be premature for us to be making too much of a, of a representation at this stage, other than perhaps just approving a strategy as to how to um, deal with the consultation until it's actually released for publication and, and be able to be seen. That would make a lot of sense to me. Uh, any other members of the public? May I speak, Chair? Yes, please. Um, I would like to um, be invited to give information as and when necessary about uh, Agenda Item 8, the Governance Review. There's quite a lot to be said about um, how the recent Cheshire East meeting uh, proceeded and uh, how the law relates to uh, governance re reviews. But I, I, I don't want to read out everything no. I've got. Uh, it would take a long time. But if anybody would like to ask me anything about it, then please feel free to do so at the appropriate time. Thank you, Chair. Well, I don't 
don't know how we can deal with that, Roger. I mean, how can we ask you questions if we don't know what you've got? Okay. Well, I'll start with something fairly simple, and that is um, what the official Constitution Committee meeting was about on, on the 6th of April. And the recommendation was that the draft... Roger, Roger, just before you continue, is it something you've got that you could circulate to us? A written document? He's already circulated. Chair, we, we have this uh, as a motion that we were going to discuss the governance review. So we either do it here with Roger now or... No, no I'm, the I'm, I'm asking if he's got a document that he can circulate to us so that we don't have to discuss it right here and now. What I'd like to say as a starter is that at the recent uh, Cheshire East committee meeting, it was attended by both myself, uh, Ashley and uh, Councillor Smith and the recommendation which was considered by the committee was to um, examine the draft proposals and to um, uh, agree on the report for the purposes of consultation and a 12-week period of consultation uh, subject to any amendments to reflect the response of Holmes Chapel Parish Council to the pre-consultation survey. Uh, at a critical point in the meeting, Councillor Marron uh, suggested an amendment, um, an amendment which was adopted by a majority vote. And that amendment reads, where there is a proposal to change a parish name or to alter the parish boundary, Cheshire East will conduct a postal referendum reflecting the request of the town or parish council and where electors vote for no change will abide by that result. So I think that's a very significant uh, amendment and it was adopted, as I said, by a majority vote of councillors. So what I'm saying, I guess, to you is that uh, if... Uh, Hanforth Parish Council objects to um, the proposals in the governance review. It can ask Cheshire East Council to conduct a postal referendum of the residents of Hanforth. Thank you. Anybody else? Alan uh, wants to respond. Yeah. Yes, can I just go back on that? I agree with Roger, and I think that's a very good thing. Uh, the only thing I would say is that in any referendum, you have to be very careful how the question is put, um, because you can get the answer you want by slanting the question one, one way or another. So I think if we are going to ask Cheshire East to do a referendum rather than us doing our own, we should ask for us to be able to decide how the, which question is put and how it is put rather than leave it to them. I agree. Mr Murdoch? Um, I looked up the... Oops, I've lost my screen. I looked up the results of the 2010 referendum, by the way, um, the, for... for which was a referendum of Alderley Edge and, uh, sorry, of Style and Wilmslow and Antforth, separate referenda. Um, Hanforth's vote was uh, 615 in favour of what we now have, um, 415 in favour of us having a joint council with Wilmslow and... 500 and something in favour of having no council <coughs> at all. So that means that there were about three and a half thousand who didn't vote at all in that referendum. Um, if anybody's interested in that paper, I can copy it to you. Chair, just based on that, on that comment, 
I think people are far more switched on and more communicated now by internet with um, Facebook. There are far more people now with far more opinions on what should happen in local governance. I don't doubt that for a moment. I'm just saying what the numbers were. Well, there's, there's a lot more people in the village now, isn't there? So. No, not really. Compared to 2010, I don't think it's changed that much. Uh, Could I just say something, Chair? Hmm. It's David Pincom. Hello? Yes, yes, please carry on. Right, okay, fine. Um, I recall 11 years ago, in, over a period of three nights, knocking on doors just on, on, on 700 households, um, less than 700 households in Handforth, and collecting 700 signatures. Not one of those signatures wanted to merge with anyone at that time. They wanted to preserve the boundaries of Handforth. And that was only over a three night period. If I'd done the full research, because we needed to get 10% of Handforth residents um, to put forward to Cheshire East to ensure that Handforth was dealt with as a separate entity. If I had continued my quest for signatures opposing the uh, merge, and that was 11 years ago, I am sure I would have collected in excess of 2,000 signatures. So, you know, this business of the you quoting figures at the moment, it's absolute rubbish because everyone I spoke to signed a petition to say they did not want to merge with Wilmslow or anyone else 11 years ago. Why has it, why would it change now? What was your polling done before that referendum or after? Was what, sorry? The polling that you did, the, knock, the door knocking that you yes. did, the signature collection. Yes, I did that, I did that in conjunction with uh, Councillor Burkill, who um, for 30 years has oh stood God. as an independent in Handforth. And he was determined that Hanforth boundaries would be preserved. So therefore, I went out knocking. I got 700 signatures and that over a three night period. And they were taken to Cheshire East and Hanforth uh, remained as a separate entity with no boundary changes. My question was, was that before or after the referendum that Cheshire East held? It was probably after because we were we weren't really advised that Cheshire East were holding a referendum we heard from um uh, words by, by saying that people were taking asking people for for to sign petitions on the gates of Wilmslow to, um a show showground and going around different people asking for a signature wouldn't it be lovely if um we were joined if Hanforth joined with Wilmslow and, and they were getting signatures that way. They did not come on in, down into Handforth and ask the residents of Handforth. So the, the figures that you are quoting are very misleading. We, we are now in a situation, of course, where all three of the affected parish councils have voted to uh, reject the proposal that Handforth, Wilmslow and Chorley be combined. All three par parish councils have objected to that proposal. Uh, there's a gentleman called oh. Jordan Hector with his hand up. Ashley, can you help this gentleman? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hi, yes, I'd like to just ask um, what Councillor Tolver's position is on the possible merger? And will you support the council's decision in campaigning for independence? Councillor Tolver's position is that the decision should be made by the people of Handful. 
Chair, can I just make a comment on that? Well, that's that's not what you said to John Phipps, the reporter from the Economist. It is very exactly what I said. Pardon? That is exactly what I said. You, you know, you said it shouldn't exist. You said the Paris Council shouldn't exist. Quite categorically. Can you show me the words? I can do, not right now, but I can I can send a copy. Many people have seen it. It's been it's been published. The actual interview with uh, many people in Hamforth, and uh, yours, I think, was the uh, the final swan song at the end, where he asked you. Uh, his final comment was, in an ideal world, would you, uh, what would you, what do you like? And you, your comment was, there is no ideal world. But you'd actually already stated that you felt it should not exist. Well, I feel that the decision about it should be made by the people of Hanford. Well, why bother standing for a parish council if you're not going to have a vote, not going to have a, a position on it? Well, when I stood for the parish council, it wasn't a concern, it wasn't an issue. No, I'm not specif specifying that single one, but if you if you look to stand for a parish council or any elected office, you need to have positions so that people know whether to vote you or not. Um, I presume that when you were uh, canvassing, you I'm told people what you stood for, and you didn't say, I don't want the parish council to exist. The question didn't arise at that time. I didn't even think about it at that time. Which time? No, I'm saying that people expect candidates to have a position. How do you know that? <clears throat> because it's common sense that they want to know whether you're black or white on your decisions. Do I believe it black or is it white? It's people expect a decision, expect to know what you stand for. That's what you are. That's what we ask our politicians all the time. Where do you stand on this, Jeremy Corbyn? Where do you stand on it, Boris Johnson? That's what we ask. We don't just say, well, I'll see what the voters say. That's not what happens, is it? So we're going around in circles now. Yes, I'm yes, just stating that what well, you actually democracy. said into an, what you said to an, uh, a reporter or the economist. That's all I'd like to put on the table. In a, in a democracy, it rather does depend on what the people want. But they do rely on their leaders to provide to leadership. People of Hanforth want, as you seem to do. But leaders provide leadership, or should do. Well, the leadership can be to say, we shall have a referendum. So, Chair, can I ask, in a you, referendum, you would you can. be voting to merge or remain the same? You can ask as much as you like. My position is that this is a decision for the people of Hanforth, not for you. Which you are one of. And I shall put my cross in the box when the time comes. Well, you but keep we it a secret. Problem. Right, okay. That's fine. Shall we proceed with to agenda? <clears throat> Item four, to prove and sign... This lady. This lady has been, been, been waiting for ages. Bradley's iPad, Ashley. Uh, go for it. Good evening, councillors. I was just wondering, um, Councillor Moore gave this really inspiring speech about um, the climate emergency. I'm just wondering what's Handforth's um, what's Handforth's ideas going forward into the climate emergency. Thank you, Councillor Moore. Uh, yes, well, I'll be answering that a little bit later on when I talk about um, agenda item 211110. But yes, I have personally, it's one of my um, crusades, and I'm hoping that there'll be lots of things that uh, Hamforth residents will get on board with, um, which will be rolled out over the next 12 months. But it's not just down to me. I can put forward ideas. I want ideas from residents as well. This is, oh, Hanforth belongs to all of us. Okay. Shall we move on to the agenda? Item four is the to approve and sign the minutes 
the meeting of the 16th of March. Anybody got any comments on the minutes? No, Chair. No, Chair. No comments. Okay. So, can I have a proposal to support them? Accept them. I'd like to propose them, Chair. Second. I second. All in favour? In favour. In favour. In favour. In favour. All right. Prove and sign the order of payments, payment of accounts. <coughs> Anybody got any comments? I have no issue on that, Chair. I have no queries on that, Chair. Samson? No, none, thank you. Okay, can I have a proposal to accept them? I'll propose. Second. I'll second. Okay. All in favour? In favour. In favour. In favour. In favour. Unanimous. Okay, you up to speed, Ashley? Yes, perfect, thank you. Item six, to receive recommendations from the HBC Finance Committee with respect to the grant applications received from Friends of Hanford Station for £700. Now, we decided to defer this item for revision. Yeah. Yeah. Don't need a vote on that. Item seven is ditto recommendation from the Finance Committee with respect to the uh, application for £500 from Bear Necessities Toiletry Bank, which we supported. With the, uh, yes, with the amendment that it would only be spent in handfuls, please. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I do need you to vote on this again because this is the actual giving of the money now. Okay. okay. I'll propose. I'll second. I'll, I'll third. <laughs> uh, all in favour? In, in favour. Yeah. Good. Me too. In favour. Okay, look. Item, uh, where are we? Item eight to discuss Cheshire's governance review which seeks to merge Hanford Parish Council with Wilmslow Town Council, following on from Hanford Parish Council motion 21087 from the result of the Cheshire East Consul Consul Constitution Committee meeting held on the 6th of April. Councillor Moore is promoting this item. Yes, I think it's very important that we just have a brief overview of what's happened so far uh, and uh, Mr. Small has um, informed us uh, about the Cheshire's decision to have a referendum, which I welcome. Um, also, the fact that Wormslow uh, Town Council, along with Shirley and ourselves, have all voted to stay out uh, of the um, not the merger. We we do not want it. We are three quite distinct groups, and that's the way we would um, we would like to keep it. Um, I concur with what um, Alan said earlier on. We still don't know um, whether these will actually come to fruition, but I think it's important to keep up to date with what's actually happened. So I think that's one for everyone to have a think about. As far as I read it, there's been no decision made by Cheshire East yet. Correct what they're going to consult on precisely. So we wait to see that, do we not? Yes, definitely. I'm not sure it'll come to a consultation, to be honest, but who knows? So is there anything practical that anybody wants to try to do at the moment? Um, could I just ask a question, Chair? <laughs> If, if a merge went through, um, what would the benefits, in your opinion, be to hand forth in a merge where you would be losing um, 
one of your one of your council well, with several of your councillors because it's it's indicating that um, you would go down from seven councillors to four. Yeah. Where may may I um, may I chip in at this stage uh, and quote um, provision ninety three from the Government and Public Involvement in Health Act 2007. Provision 93 relates to duties when undertaking a review. And item six under that heading states that the principal council, that is the local authority, must take into account any representations received in connection with the review. And I would like to suggest that Hanforth Parish Council gets together with Wilmslow Town Council and Chorley Town Council and produces a joint uh, submission uh, to Cheshire East Council with regard to this proposed merger. Very good. Anybody else? Yes, Chair, I'd just, I'd just like to, I was quoting from memory earlier, uh, I've actually got the, the quote in front of me now. Um, you mentioned about uh, uh, an email an, an email exchange between yourself and the uh, reporter from The Economist, and his actual quote was, do you believe that Hamforth Parish Council should exist? And you replied, of course not. That's what this is all about. So I think that's pretty unequivocal where you stand. I don't recall exchanging any emails. Well, it's a good job that the reporter remembered it, because he got that in email, and he's given he's given me permission to use that content should I wish. Well, fair enough. So, will you be carrying on as chair, Councillor Tolver, as someone who doesn't believe that the parish council should exist? Does that mean that your role is invalid? Do you think that there is room for more than one no, opinion? I was, ask, I was asking you the question, Chair, whether you would be resigning because you don't believe the council should I'm, exist. I'm answering your question with a question of my own. Well, that's not good for me. Okay. I don't need a question from you, Chair. I just need an answer, that's all. Okay. And it's quite a straightforward question. Would you like me to repeat it? Repeat it as much as you like. But you're not going to answer? Only if you allow me to answer in the way that I choose. Okay, please go ahead. Let's see if we can make sense of it. The question was, will you resign from your position as chair as you don't want Hamforth Parish Council to exist? I intend to resign as chair, but not for that reason. When will that be, Chair? At the end of this meeting. Thank you for your frank and forthright answer. I appreciate it. It's about the first time you ever have. I say what I see, Councillor, and having seen what you just said, I can show my appreciation. It's just one comment, Chair, I'd like to make. I'm totally against merging with Wilmslow. I feel that Hanforth is a community in its own right. It has a very eclectic mix. And I want to champion Hanforth. We don't want to be the poor relations as we were before 2010. I want us to be one of the best councils in the land. And I'm sure with the correct people in place, we will be. Thank you. That's all I want to say. Shall we move on to item nine on the agenda? Yeah. Item nine, this is Councillor Moore's suggestion to discontinue the Greener Hansworth website uh, provided by One and One Ionis and move any selected content over to a dedicated page on the HPC website. Okay, yes, I propose this because uh, we're paying for a website 
that uh, currently when you go on it gives up a warning to say there's a problem. I do not know what the problem is, but my Norton doesn't like it. Um, I did try um, to suggest to Councillor Tolver, who I have to say, I think it's a very laudable idea. I'm all behind everything that is green and having information out there for people. However, in my personal opinion, there are too many inaccuracies on the site. Um, now, I have been reminded by Councillor Tolver um, I, by email yesterday that he wrote the site he put everything on the site he owns the uh, Green Hamforth logo and he would be well actually he didn't say that he said that he, we would need his permission to transfer anything over to HPC website I understand that Councillor Tolver put a lot of work in it and I do applaud him for that however it hasn't been used there's been no input to it I did try to put forward some ideas but I was told uh, by Councillor Tolver that he wouldn't necessarily be altering everything therefore I don't really see how this is an HPC website when nobody other than Councillor Tolver has any input into it therefore if Councillor Tolver is agreeable then there might be some things we would wish to transfer. There may not be, but that's down for the council to decide. Does that make this a moot point? Is it going to stay? Sorry? Councillor Smith. Yes, I'm... Any discussion offline? Mm. Yes, I was, I was wondering, will you be um, remaining on the council in order that you can have input into what Sue Moore is looking to do? Well, I'm not sure what she's in, intending to do, but uh, uh, yes. Okay, because she obviously she has uh, very strong views about uh, green issues and is uh, a good advocate for them. I think what I would suggest is that uh, um, I take over the payment for the Green Hanforth website and allow the parish council to copy what it wants to select from that for its own purposes. Well, what's the point of that, Chair? Why can't we have our own Greener Handforth website? We can call it anything else but Greener. It doesn't have to... That wasn't what Councillor Moore was suggesting. No, but in view of your um, objections, which I take on board, then we'll, we'll just perhaps start again. Yeah. But that's down for the Council to discuss in May um, when we have uh, another elected member to uh, the council and we can decide it, we can't really decide things now which might be changed in may time so i think it, that needs to be uh, deferred till after the election but i do agree that um the chair should take over the payment of the website so do i okay ashley can you arrange that uh you're gonna have to vote on this if you want to do that um okay. Yeah. Okay, can I propose the motion then? Can I just say that I can't take part in this because I have an interest in... You, you do, sorry, yes. So you three will have to discuss it here and now. I'll support, I'll second Ooh. Councillor Moore's proposal. Could, yeah, could I, could I just have it, just clarified for me again please, what the proposal actually is? The proposal it, will be taken off, it will be taken off our books and transferred yeah. to Brian's. Yeah. Well, if, if uh, both councillors are in favour of it, then I'll, I'll, I'll go along with it. Okay, well, we haven't voted properly, have we? In no, favour no. of the motion for Councillor Tolver to take back his Greener Handforth website. In favour. In favour. Uh, I understand Brian has to abstain on this. Yeah. No motion is carried. 
Okay, item 10. Uh, I don't know if you want to continue with this one, do you, Councillor Moore? Oh, I don't see why not. Do you want to continue with item 10? Because it says following on from item 9. Councillor Moore, can I just make a comment before yes. you start? Certainly. In our budget, there's 10k for greener handforth. So is that going to go put back into the reserves until such time as we have a new um, project? I think that's probably up to the council to decide in May, isn't it? Well, well we no, no, because we're giving the greener handforth website back to the chair. So why do we need 10K in a greener handfuls budget? I don't think there's any particular connection. Well, they did because you you were, you approved it. There's not 10,000 pounds for the greener handfuls website. No, you approved oh. 10K to spend on greener handfuls to do with your website. Um, on greener issues, wasn't it? Not greener to, issues. Not to do with the website, the... The point of the 10K was to spend on things like trees and planting and... Yes, but plants. wasn't it going to come through your website? What do you mean through it? Well, when when people being asked to apply, if they wanted to volunteer or if they wanted some money spent, they'd come through the Greener Handforth website and then it would be brought back to the council. The Greener Handforth website was purely for campaigning and for telling people about things it wasn't it wasn't related to the money particularly i think at this moment in time councillor samson we should just leave things as they stand no i disagree. i totally disagree okay well obviously that is your prerogative that's why no. we have a council and we all right. discuss okay. matter but I don't, I don't want that money spent willy-nilly when we haven't got a proper formulated uh, area for the money to go into. So yeah. I think it should go back into the reserves until such time as we have a proper named project. Can, can, I, can I speak? Yes, please. Hello. Yeah, um, the, the, the 10,000 in that budget line is exactly that, it's a budget. And it would require HPC to authorise any spend from that budget or to authorise it as a removal, as a line item, if yes. there is no longer a recognised route for people to request money for green issues. If Councillor Moore, as part of HPC, is going to ensure that that exists, then we should then look again at what funds should be available. I don't think, because it was quite an arbitrary figure and uh, when you asked when, when it was asked what is the backing what is the basis of this amount of money uh, and where you got the figures from I don't know if you remember chair but I do it was just about two years ago exactly uh, the first meeting of the new council where you pointed to your head as, and saying that you got it from there and then it was it was voted in yeah. uh, without any understanding by anybody else of what that 10,000 was made up of. It was basically just a reserve amount. Yes, yes, just an arbitrary number. Yes. To be, to be set aside for whatever projects might come up individually. And as far as I'm concerned, it still is. I, I, I think you could allow it to remain there as something that, um, you know, if Councillor Moore came up with a, a woodland management plan for something where you needed to spend £1,234. It could be allocated from that ten thousand if you so choose. Uh, yes, I, I, I agree. It, it needs consideration. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Yes, it's it's not to be spent on something. It's to be spent on whatever projects the council decides on in support of greening of Hanford. Agreed. Yes. Okay. So can I continue now? Sorry, please do, yes. Okay. Um, I, I have to say that I was really disappointed that Greener Hanford didn't take off, that it wasn't, um, we haven't used these two years that we could have done to have done a lot of things. So <clears throat> this is my 
This is all about preserving and improving. Over a thousand visitors. Sorry? It does have over a thousand visitors. Yes. Thank you, Councillor Tolver. Um, this is about preserving and improving the environment and making Hamforth a better place to live. Using the neighbourhood plan, I've identified um, the greener spaces as in the neighbourhood plan. I'm not going to read them out now because we're running very late, but there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and one that uh, Alan Murdoch made me aware of, which we didn't put onto the neighbourhood plan. Some are parks and some are just parcels of land. So while some areas lend themselves to tree planting, woodland management is entirely different. The woodland management concerns of habitat, um, recreational amenities ed and educational and climate change. So we'd just like to briefly talk about those three things. Climate change. We're on the brink of a disaster if we do not do something to reduce our carbon emissions. I was devastated this morning to see that the figures so far for 2021 show a worldwide increase in carbon emissions, very much like after the um, monetary collapse uh, governments are busy doing things, spending money and so forth and so on, and it's having a massive effect. Sea, sea levels are already rising to unprecedented levels, causing loss of land, both for living and food production. Whilst the government prepare their responses for the climate meeting scheduled for later in the year in Scotland, we as locals can and must do something to help. We need to manage and maximise what we already have and identify areas to plant more trees. Habitat. We're set to lose yet more of our open spaces when the garden village comes to fruition. And so it is even more imperative to save what little green space we have and use them to our advantage. We need to maintain and expand the habitat for all animals and plants. We're losing pollinators at a rapid rate, and this will have a knock-on effect on food production. Amenities and recreation. We need, to we need the current woodlands to become more accessible all the year round and more accessible to everybody. During the pandemic, lockdown walking has become more popular, so we should encourage it and provide areas, more areas where people can walk. Educationally, school children can become involved in a variety of projects in the woodland, which would enhance their understanding, knowledge and appreciation. Various products, uh, projects can be used for maths, English and geography. It's hoped that these children will bring their parents on board, and that's critical. We get the children involved, we get their parents involved, we get the project moving. It can't be done by one person, it has to be done by the community. We must prefer, preserve our green spaces for educational amenity and recreation and help and help. This will help with climate change. To this end, I had a long discussion with Transition Wilmslow and I had um, a gentleman called uh, Chris recommended to me. Chris has worked for a very long time with the National Trust on woodland projects and um, he, I've already, I've had an initial discussion with him and he's given me some idea of the kind of things he can advise us on. When I look at places like the Southwood and the Northwood here on Hall Road, there are huge um, differences that we can make in those woods. There's a lot of dead trees um, that need removing or doing whatever we need to do. There are um, Spanish bluebells in there which need removing. They're not native to here. There are so many things we can do. I don't want to go through all of the things now because I, I could talk about it for days, but, you know, this is my, my hobby horse and perhaps not other people's. We do need to do something. I can't express that enough. Um, if you've been watching the recent programmes on climate change, uh, there's a number of them now on the television. Um, it's quite scary. And I really do think, as locals, we can do a lot. We can't change government policies and stuff like that. That's beyond our remit. But we can change our area. We can change Hamful and make it a better place for all of us. Just so it strikes me as very ironic that... Uh
the, the government is subsidising farmers in various parts of the country to turn their farmland back into bogs and wild land. And here we are about to dig up a great chunk of it for the garden village. I know, it's tragic. Absolutely tragic. Absolutely. With that, what I would like to see with that, Brian, is I've been talking to Andy Frost and we did discuss um, moving some of those trees, those that can be moved, because, you know, if we lose all of those trees, it'll be a, an absolute disaster. But there are lots of saplings over there that could be moved and put elsewhere. It doesn't mean we, we're going to uh, increase our woodland, we're, we're only just moving it about. But if you average out the figures uh, that people that people like the Woodland Trust, the National Trust, uh, Climate Change Committee, we have to plant one tree per person per year. That's 6,000 trees in Hanford. Look at what the Wilmslow Woodland Group are doing, and they've been working with the National Trust, and they've planted uh, thousands upon thousands of trees, and they're, they're designing a new woodland. It can be done, but we need people to come along and help. We need people to come with, with their ideas and their brains and their brawn, um, and we can do it. We can do it. I, I'm doing this for my three and a half year old grandson. I won't be here in 2050 when we're all knee deep in water, but I'm sure as we'll try to do as much as I possibly can while I am here. So I would urge you to support the motion. Thank you, Sam. Can I, can I propose it? Uh, what what do we propose? Have lots of spellbound by the speech. Uh, Twenty one eleven ten. Spend of a thousand pounds for the management plan. I don't know. Okay. Do we have a support uh, proposer? Yes, I proposed it. Second up. I'll, I'll second, second it. it. I don't mind which way around it is. I'll second it. Okay. All in favour? In favour. In favour. In favour. Yeah. Okay. Unanimous. Brilliant. It's got to say, Sue, that was very well said. Thank right, you. Eleven, a fifteen-minute discussion for items not on the agenda. On the agenda. I presume this is this is under Councillor Moore's name, but I presume this is for members of the public. Well, yes, and uh, I know that the meeting's gone on a lot longer than we thought, but I do think it's very important that members of the public have a say in not only meet, uh, things that are on the agenda, but to talk about other issues that they might want to bring up. We won't necessarily have an answer for them, but we can go away and, and come up with some answers. Uh, but I think it's important that people have the opportunity to make comments. Okay, so members of the public, any suggestions, proposals? Oh, hello. There's a few hands up. Hello. Let's see the second one. Hello. Ashley. Oh, yeah, hello. Oh, that's an impressive microphone. <laughs> you have your hand up. Hello. Hello. Thank you, Brian. Uh, Christopher Nicholas here. Um, I'm just wondering, with regards to the rumours to the new spa opening on Church Lane. Sorry, sorry could you say that again? The, the, the very well-known um, convenience store, Spa, I heard, is opening on Church Lane. All right. There's no Church Lane in Hanford. Okay, moving on. Roger. Ooh. Roger's got his hand up. Yeah, Roger. A question for uh, Councillor Moore. Have you considered the um, local green space immediately behind Hanforth Hall? At the moment, uh, very little tree planting on it. Uh, it's owned by the Wadsworth Trust. I wondered whether 
it might be a good idea to approach the World Wars Trust for permission to plant trees on their land. Yes, Roger, I have to talk about it. Yes, thank you. It's, it is. I'd love to have get hold of that space and have it as Hanford space, not Wadsworth space. But yes, um, I did inquire of Ashley how to get hold of the Wadsworth Trust, and that will be one of the things that I will be attempting to do. Thank you. Gordon Hector has his, <clears throat> sorry, my voice is going, he has his hand up, Ashley. Oh, here we go. Hi, yes, thank you. Um, Councillor Tolver didn't answer part of my question before, so I'm just going to answer it again. Will you support the council's position on pro-independence? Given all the answers I'm going to give about this matter. There's a Jason Ewell. Guitar man, another guitar man. Where is he? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank yet. you, I'm unmuted. Sorry. Um, that's all right, no problem. Uh, you'll see nationally the news um, of this European Super League in football. Um, I was wondering, would the council be making representations to Manchester United, given that 80%, <laughs> nationally, 80% of football fans are against it, and the, the city and the United clubs do mean a lot to local people? Has I think it's pretty much beyond the remit of the parish council. Yeah, great. So, okay, nothing. I'd like to be able to. I'd like to be able to have an effect on it. I'll say that for sure. Yeah, I'd love to. <clears throat> In what way could? Uh, what What's the forum to progress this then, at local level, if if any? Right, your MP. Okay. Yeah, probably the best way. Or the local press. Yeah. There was a lot on the news about it tonight. I think it's progressing apace. Yeah, I think, uh, well, City looked like they might have withdrawn, but um, United yeah. and others. Yeah. All right. Um, the, the, the mighty voice of Hanford Parish Council probably doesn't count for much amongst the councils of the moneyed mighty. <laughs> Okay, we'll close that item then and go on to uh, number 12 to discuss the update from MHCLG and noting that virtual meetings will no longer be lawful from May the 17th to confirm the date and time of the next meeting. Ashley, what, what does the ruling actually say? Um, yeah. Is it? We're not allowed to continue with virtual meetings after May 17th. Uh, no, it'll be the Friday before, sorry. Uh, 16th, 14th, May the 14th, something like that. You're not allowed to continue with virtual meetings. And what do we know about the preparedness of the youth centre? Uh, we know that the youth centre is prepared, ready to reopen. I've spoken to the caretaker. Yes, we are allowed back there. So um, will they be uh, swabbing it down every time we use it or whatever? Uh, uh, yes, they'll have to. Will they be charging for it? Do we know? Uh, no, we have our new lease agreement gives us use of the hall when we need it for our parish council meetings. Okay, good. So you'll be moving back into the office, presumably? Yes, yeah. Um, what's the other thing? And of course, we'll have to hold our next meeting effectively on May the 18th as an annual meeting. Why, why on the 18th? Um, if if a new councillor is elected on May the 6th, they effectively become a councillor on May the 10th. I would then have to issue them with an agenda, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So in good time for the... Will it have to be the 18th or later? Or later. Yes, that's a point. Yeah. Um, up until the 26th is the last opportunity. Okay. Um, is it possible, uh, if we have to meet uh, in person, is it possible to have um, the facility for uh, residents to um, watch the meeting or still? Um, we have to meeting? provide facility uh, to live stream it as we do now. 
So we can continue with people coming in on Zoom. It, what I'll have to do, and this is going to be strange, um, I will effectively have the council as one participant on Zoom being live streamed. That's the only way I can do it. Right. But at least everybody gets to see what's happening in a meeting. Mm -hmm. That's the government guidelines. So it was one, what do you mean as one participant? Um, you will all be on video, basically, on this laptop, on Zoom, live streamed. You mean we'll be all, all be on a single sc screen? If Effectively, you know. yes. Ah. Yeah. Ah. Hmm. That's the only economical way I can think of doing it. Without buying high-tech equipment and hundreds of mics and God knows what else. Does that mean that people would be able to ask questions of us or, or not? Or would it have to be... I mean, what we could do is technically have a small Zoom meeting that I'm in charge of, if you see what I mean, so that people might be able to do that. But it gets very complicated whilst I'm trying to note down what the council's saying and trying to look at 100 Zoom participants. Right, right. Yeah, uh, it's worth trying it. I'm just concerned. I, um, I know that Zoom meetings aren't ideal, but for a lot of residents, um, people with children and, and the like, or older folk that don't want to come out at night or whatever, the Zoom bit is it is the it is a lifeline to them. They they want to watch it. They want to see what's going on. They want yeah. to take part. Yeah, I mean, look, I think we'll meeting. have to. We'll have to try and semi-zoom it. Okay. Yeah. How, many, how many have we got on um, uh, YouTube tonight? Uh, I, I have no idea. Um, 80, I think, actually. Is that it? Right. 80 then, according to John. Uh, let me have a look now. And just, just on one point on that, actually, about you know your, you having to try and look in two directions at once. Let's oh, yeah, say. 175, on, yeah. On, on, on your... Uh, the issue that you have, obviously, trying to look at everyone, all the participants, and take notes, uh, mm. given that the, we've got the recording of the meeting. Yes, uh, theoretically, I can go back to it and be able to pick up on anything that I missed, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and is there any value in a discussion, or if we had one already, with the webmaster, because there's going to be others in this uh, in this boat, aren't there? Yeah, yeah, uh, I'm sure he'll be able to contribute, yeah, definitely. Thank you. Uh, can, I, can I just make a comment? Um, there, there was somebody had his hand up for a, a very long time, uh, and when we dropped out, he dropped his hand. Um, it, is it possible for him to just have his um, his question? Who? It's, it's the, name, the name is the second hand, the guy wearing orange top. Oh, yeah, there you go. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. Uh, my uh, question is about uh, Councillor Burke Hill. Um, I've had a, a, I've read online about him. I just wondered where he is. He's not here this evening. He's, but he's a councillor, isn't he? And he's not been here for months. And your question is what? Where is he? I don't know. Oh, okay. Thank you. I thought it was going to be. Oh. Okay, I think we're at the. You know, we need, we need to decide on the date of the next meeting. Anybody got an opinion about that? The eighteenth of May is fine. Eighteenth is a Tuesday. Yep, eighteenth of May is fine with me. Is that fine with you, Ashley? Is it fine? Right? Yeah. Well, yeah. it'll have to be. I'd propose that then. Is that the first day that the youth centre is open? It'll be open on the 17th, I suppose, yeah. Do you think that's maybe a little bit risky? Mm, um, no, it's already open now for varying things, so I think that'll be absolutely fine. Mm. Uh, if, we leave it any, if we leave it too late, we run the risk of uh, going outside the period and we'll fall foul of the law. Yeah. Book mm -hmm. it up, 18th. We go for the 18th. 18th at Hanforth Youth Centre. Yeah. Good. 
Okay, close of meeting. And as I said, I'm intending to resign as chairman of the council. Um, I, I'll take Ashley's view on whether it's administratively convenient for that to happen immediately or whether you need uh, my, my signature, as it were, available for a few days. Um, I, I, I think you'd better just put it in writing uh, on an email or something along those lines. Um, you might need to sign the odd thing. Um, off the top of my head, I can't think at the moment. And for calling extraordinary meetings is the other possible thing. If anything, if anything urgent came up. Oh yes. Um, to councillors could. Oh my God! I mean, that is a bit of an administrative strange one. Um, so councillors can call it. I can call it as well if need be. Yeah. You can you can only call it by asking the chairman. Yes, I can. Yeah. Well, we haven't got a chairman after mm. tonight. Well, that's what I'm saying. Maybe I need to pause my actual resignation for a little bit until the adminers can be sorted out. Unless we ask the vice chair to take over. Mm. Yeah, thing is, nobody can get a response for him. I don't think that's very likely. Can Ashley look into it tomorrow? Um, um, yeah, I, 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 I've seen this happen in a few other councils, and I'll have to find out what the procedure is. Um, yeah. And it can be circulated by email, can't it? And it can. It yeah. can indeed, yeah. And Ashley, can you find out if Councillor Bruton will be willing to step in as chair? I, I can email him, yes. Thank you. Right. Well, I'll declare it as an intent rather than a, an actual fact for the moment. So will you still be sending Ashley the uh, required communication? I'm not quite sure how to phrase it, but uh, well, I'll, I'll discuss it with Ashley over the coming days. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to. Well, I'll find out what's happened in other councils. I don't want to cause yeah. any inconvenience. Yeah. Okay, close of meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Charles. Thank you for all. Thank the you, guys. And contributed. Yeah.